Good morning, it's Wednesday, January 6th, 2021. I'm Guy McPherson of Nature Bats Last. And this is a science update. I would strongly encourage you to go to guymcpherson.com, otherwise known as Nature Bats Last, to today's post, which includes this video. But if you're seeing it on YouTube, I would encourage you to go to the post instead, which is called Science Update, Climate Scientists Overtly Lying. And in that post, I will provide links to all of the papers I'm going to talk about. So you can check it out, reading, see if I'm misrepresenting somebody's views. All right, so I read this wonderful paper on it came out January 3rd at Inside Climate News. It's called, Many Scientists Now Say Global Warming Could Stop Relatively Quickly After Emissions Go to Zero. And that's amazing because emissions might in fact go at or near zero sometime in the not too distant future, especially if we get rid of all human industrial activity. But that said, this, the story at Inside Climate News starts with atmospheric carbon dioxide reached its highest level in millions of years in 2020. Research during the year showed global warming is accelerating. In fact, through November the last year, last year, this came out early 2021, so it's referring to 2020. Last year was on pace to end up as either the hottest or second hottest on record, almost one degree Celsius above pre-industrial times. Well, that's half true. According to a paper by Hansen and Sato, it's on track to be the warmest year on record ever. And one degree Celsius? Didn't we pass that many years ago? Yes, in fact, we did. This is the first example of climate scientists overtly lying that appears in this paper. In September of 2020, NASA Earth wrote on Twitter that, quote, the Arctic region is warming three times as fast as the rest of the planet with the effects beyond the ocean. That's exactly right. This whole story picks and chooses from really dire sounding information, most of which is accurate, and really hopeful sounding information, most of which is misrepresenting the evidence or blatantly lying about it. Here's the take home message. The paper quotes Jory Rogel, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that name correctly. He's a leader, lead author of the next major climate assessment from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And he's at Imperial College in London. He's a climate scientist. And he says, quote, it is our best understanding that if we bring down CO2 to net zero, the warming will level off. The climate will stabilize within a decade or two. There will be very little or no additional warming. Our best estimate is zero. This is an outright lie that ignores dozens of self-reinforcing feedback loops that have already been triggered and also ignores the aerosol masking effect, as I've come to expect from every paid climate scientist. The aerosol masking effect, so-called global dimming, doesn't even exist, even though it was featured in a BBC episode in 2005. The Lion Man, I mean Michael Mann, says these models assumed that concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere would remain constant. These are the old models that would take centuries before they decline, which is correct. And now he backs off of that and says that this really is true. It's a dramatic change in the paradigm that has been lost on many who cover this issue, perhaps because it hasn't been well explained by the scientific community. It's an important development that is still underappreciated. And here's the take home line from Michael Mann. It's definitely the scientific consensus now that the warming stabilizes quickly within 10 years of emissions going to zero. An outright lie. A bald faced, outright bold lie. It's definitely the scientific consensus now that warming stabilizes quickly within 10 years of emissions going to zero. What about the paper from the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, December 26th, 2018, written by Burke and colleagues, 
entitled Pliocene and Eocene provide best analogs for near future climates. What about that? They say that as early as 2030, using the IPCC's representative concentration pathways, that we're headed for an Eocene style climate, which if you're keeping score, was at least two degrees Celsius warmer than we are right now. It doesn't sound like we have a consensus here after all. What about oh, two and a half weeks before the paper came out that's at the top of the blog and the one that I've been referring to so far with from Inside Climate News with the lies from climate scientists. Well, on the 14th of December, 2020, 14th of December, 2020, just three weeks ago and two, two and a half weeks before this paper appeared in Inside Climate News, James Hansen, you might remember him as something of a climate scientist, the renowned James Hansen, and Makiko Sato posted on James Hansen's Columbia website, Global Warming Acceleration. And here's how the abstract starts. Record global temperature in 2020, despite a strong La Nina in recent months, reaffirms a global warming acceleration that is too large to be unforced noise. It implies an increased growth rate of the total climate forcing and Earth's energy imbalance. So this is James Hansen who has the grace instead of defaming me directly to say that my ideas are crazy, which is much, much more suitable for an actual scholar than what Michael Mann does and others defaming me directly based on my facial hair, for example, or what I eat or what I drink or any of a number of other things. More, more response or information rebutting the paper in Inside Climate News, the pandemic taught us how not to deal with climate change, how not to deal with climate change. From This is from MIT Technology Review. And the take home message from this story is, even if we have achieved peak emissions, even if we have achieved peak emissions. That only means we're no longer making the problem worse at an increasing rate year after year, but we're still making it worse. Carbon dioxide lasts hundreds of years in the atmosphere. Unlike what lying Michael Mann said, it lasts hundreds of years in the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is not gonna go away 10 years or 10 minutes after we stop burning fossil fuels. Some argue that the radical changes that went into effect as the coronavirus spread around the planet are a promising sign for our collective ability to address climate change. That includes the author of this paper inside Climate News. Yet, before that paper came out in Inside Climate News, this one in MIT Technology Review claims, quote, this is, frankly, nonsense. Yes, it is. Okay, let's look at a story from the Associated Press. So, because it was in the Associated Press, it ran in every major newspaper paper in the United States. The headline reads, Study, warming already baked in will blow past climate goals. Now, this paper came out in the Associated Press. It did admittedly coincident with the paper in Inside Climate News. So the author couldn't have known that this paper was gonna come out the same day as his paper. This paper points to warming already baked in will blow past climate goals. That's the headline. And it refers to a paper in Nature Climate Change from January 4th, 2021. So of course, the lying so-called climate scientists in the Inside Climate, quoted by Inside Climate News, couldn't have known about that paper, but they should have known and could have known about the paper in Nature Climate Change to which it referred. They're climate scientists after all. They're paid to keep up with the information, not to select certain bits of information that fit their narrative. So this paper 
which also ignores the aerosol masking effect and also ignores dozens of self-reinforcing feedback loop is titled Greater Committed Warming After Accounting for the Pattern Effect. And it concludes that we're committed to greater warming than people have even imagined so far, even if we stop burning fossil fuels right now. The Inside Climate News article relies virtually solely for its source material on a paper that was published in Environmental Research Letters. Nothing wrong with that. It's a peer-reviewed journal, and the quotes come from seemingly reputable individuals. The paper is titled Warming, sorry, Maximum Warming Occurs About One Decade After a Carbon Dioxide Emission. So it's about a decade after the carbon is emitted that maximum warming associated with that particular emission is realized. The heating begins immediately. The maximum heating takes about a decade. And this was a pretty big deal when it came out. And I remember very clearly when it came out. It was the first peer-reviewed article that pointed out how long it is between emission and maximum heating associated with those molecules. Yeah, that would be a lot more exciting had it come out last week or even last month. But it came out about seven years ago. Seven years ago, we knew that Rick and Caldera published this paper, 2nd of December, 2014. This paper was published. So well over six years ago, this paper was published in the peer-reviewed literature, and now climate scientists are expressing their glee about it? This smells to me. The smells of distraction and irrelevance. We've known about this paper for a very long time. I wrote about it in my long essay, Climate Change Summary and Update, right after it came out years ago. And yet here we are proclaiming it as the next big thing right after spam and toilet paper. Well, I don't understand. And I hear frequently that that methane doesn't last very long in the atmosphere. That's true. It does not last nearly as long as carbon dioxide does. It breaks down into carbon dioxide and water vapor, two powerful greenhouse gases. So no, methane doesn't last very long, the particular methane molecules. But then they break down and become other powerful greenhouse gases. There's more than 415 parts per million carbon dioxide in the atmosphere now. Remember when James Hansen was saying 350 was all we could possibly bear? And of course, this peer-reviewed paper in Environmental Research Letters in 2002 ignores the aerosol masking effect, as it seems all paid climate scientists are happy to do, and also ignores many, many self-reinforcing feedback loops. Among those self-reinforcing feedback loops are methane release, whether it's from the terrestrial permafrost or from the shallow seabed of the Arctic Ocean. That methane is being released it's two and a half times greater than it was at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. That's where we're at today. The beginning of the Industrial Revolution, there was about 750 parts per billion of methane in the atmosphere. Now there's about 250% more than that. That's a big deal. Why is nobody talking about this? We have the measurements, we have the data. We know that the methane is escaping at a rapid rate into the atmosphere. We know it's a very powerful greenhouse gas, at least 100 times more powerful than carbon dioxide, molecule for molecule. And yet we're turning away? Why? We're turning away to talk about this paper that's ancient? This paper that had findings that came out so long ago that I was writing about it in a long essay that I abandoned years ago and then subsequently abandoned another long essay because I'd written all there was to write. And this is one of the initial papers included in my climate change summary and update. That's how important it is. And we're just learning about it now? Hmm. So, I have to conclude, based on this abundant information, that some people are not telling the truth, probably by design. Why? I give several links to papers and include an extended quote from one of my papers in the peer-reviewed literature at GuyMcPherson.com, coinciding with today's release. Wednesday, January 6th, 2021. But I would like to read this one in particular. It's from one of my peer-reviewed papers in Climate Psychology Forum, 
Convincing the masses that something can be done to slow or reverse abrupt irreversible climate change encourages the masses to forego consumption of fossil fuels. Keep it in the ground is a rallying cry for activists, but admitting to the majority of the population that the situation is irreversible, doubtless would discourage people from, from leaving the fossil fuels untouched and in the ground. This is one means by which the calories unconsumed by the ignorant masses are left to the informed, presumably wealthy individuals. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is the ability to burn the limited fossil fuels that you and I don't. So of course we're encouraged to conserve, even though we've known the knowledgeable among us have known since 1865 about Jevons' paradox. And I'm gonna leave you with that. You can look it up yourself, but it's important here. And all of this, in my mind, points to paid climate scientists trying to purposely mislead the public into not burning fossil fuels so that the wealth so that they are left to the wealthy trying to convince the ignorant masses that if they just conserve it'll all be fine we want to reduce the potential for information accurate information getting released to the public because that helps the truly informed which are almost certainly those who are wealthy Seems all I have is bad news. Why do you even listen to this? Thanks for staying tuned. We'll have another one of these next week.